wanted to ask to Lila if you see some recognizes or, or s in the, for example, in the explanations of Keller on how she experiences that element of touch, because Annette also talks about touch at a certain point. If you see some of the uh, models that resonate for me, for example, I was questioning if play is coming into the picture somewhere uh, in the work of uh, Arakawa and Gins or in the descriptions you, you have from Keller's experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually I saw a lot of resonances in the discussions, mainly um, on also the importance of language. Uh, and Annette mentioned certain uh, concepts and how certain concepts like completely changed the way uh, composition was done afterwards. So even like describing certain sounds or sound objects kind of turns the sound into like a, a re repeatable element that you can use in a very precise way to create compositions afterwards. Um, and so it's it becomes like a way that you can grasp the concept and you can not just use it for yourself, but make it very clear to the, the audience. Because then it creates a, an experience that becomes much more universal in a way. And... Um, yeah, of course, and the element of uh, play uh, was a lot in the works of Arakawa and Gins, mm -hmm. mainly through the like the landing sites, as I explained, because it became uh, more of uh, like an everyday personal exercise that you can do with your your environment, mm -hmm. and it was, as I said, very okay. much based into Keller's understanding, because if you don't have the sight or if you cannot listen and everything becomes touch, then um yeah the, the kind of a scale of understanding and of language becomes like completely um like yeah different yeah i want to go further mm -hmm. on on that maybe for annette because um uh, in both of them scale and the social element is very important and i wanted to ask you how do you approach the, that social element in electroacoustic uh, music and composition is it there for you, not is it important? No, if you could elaborate a bit more on that, it's in, in the centrum of the the my choice of acousmatic uh, because uh, before I uh, I was composer with notes and uh, orchestra and choral. I direct always on, on these days uh, choral, but uh, the the question. When I discover this music and uh, learn things with uh, Pierre Schaeffer directly, um, and uh, and we w I work in the in the GRM also. The the my mini my hearing change first. Then I understand that this music offer the possibility to, to communicate very directly to any person out of any cultural background uh, uh, and age. Why? Because with the uh, use of not the sound, but the meaning um, by archetype but also but I have mm, it's not the, the way uh, today but also the use of the three levels of images from Charles Pierce uh, that I am in a school in school of cinema so here they know what is uh, the the uh, semiology of uh, Charles Pierce. Uh, then, with this kind of uh, hmm. um, uh, translation of sens, not only sound, mm. then uh, we can speak at anybody, not speak, of course, huh? uh, 
give something that anybody can understand. So for me, not electroacoustic, but acousmatic music is a more universal uh, language than uh, contemporary music and all these things. Thank you. Um, and then it's something for all three of you. You, um, it's you all relate in perception to imagination, but none of you three really went into depth there. So maybe we start with you, Aki. If you see what role imagination plays, if you yourself as a researcher are looking and listening to the work of Hodge, what what happens there, and if it's also important in the work itself, and then maybe you can uh, pick into the discussion with imagination and how that functions for you three specifically. Um, yeah. I am not sure if um, your question I understand correctly. But you know, Marcelo's case, you know, he's had a really clear conceptual background because he wanted to create uh, village music, which was actually really different, which has really different of presentation compared to the Western classical music he was actually studying. And uh, then he studied, you know, the compositions which I presented this time. And, you know, it's really different way of presentation. So he had imagination, yes, but he also has, you know, uh, was really into researching sort of culture background, different, you know, the culture difference of culture background, West and the East. So, but you know, he, imagination is not just fantasy, you know, it has to have conceptual background. So those are, in a sense, for Maceda, it's really strongly related. But you know, it can be weird because one of the pieces actually, uh, Ugnayan, he first he wanted to represent present a piece in LA, Los Angeles, and but he wanted to use one you know, car stereos. So you look at like a one like a you know, thousand of cars are running freeways. He wanted to actually play back the composition through the car stereo first, which he didn't realize because it's not it's easy. <laughs> so you know, before you know, we're using two twenty radio stations, but also you know, that's also there's a kind of part fantasy, part kind of concept. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just the imagination; it's not just you know, simple in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Um, the kind of how I, I would respond to the question is through two things that I realized through Annette's presentation, the difference between rotation and spir spiral, if I remember correctly. Because, uh, I mean, I'm not musically trained, so, but I still uh, could, in the first place uh, on rotation, I could kind of visualize the space that the sound was produced in, I could just, see the like the instrument kind of rolling in a uh, rotate like having a rotation movement but on the second case on the spiral i could visualize the space that the music would produce this kind of almost like movement that oscillates and goes like upwards in a spiral spiral movement so i found it really interesting that even without having the musical training i could just see the space just by listening to the music so I mean, that would be like the imagination of the yep. space by just, yeah, listening to the sound. And in the, the meaning making process you, you talk about with the Keller imagination is also, uh, she imagines through touch um, and then tries try to translate it. Can you elaborate a bit more? And is it a similar kind of imagination for you or is there a slight difference or variation in it? Or I guess it would be completely different because I, I can see and I can hear, so I have completely different uh, capacities to visualize space. 
uh, and as like for from Kelly's quote, for example, that she would understand everything as one uh, thickness of the world. That that would be the equivalent of being like in a space that you can only feel vibration, but it's completely pitch black, and it's like covered with a kind of like insulating material that you cannot hear any of the of the sounds. Uh, so I can imagine like meaning making for me it's much more um, uh, biased already because there's so many things that you can um, like I don't have to uh, feel my way into the room to understand what a room is or I don't have to feel uh, the space in any way to understand like how I'm going to behave within it because I, I have the mm -hmm. vision but if you don't have that, it kind of becomes like every space becomes a new space, even if it's the same space, even by like a tiny slight change. Yeah. And Annette, for you, is there a... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Invite me for, for another conference about, <laughs> about uh, space. And uh, I, I can translate... Uh, tr uh, Okay, uh, um <coughs> I play with space, uh, with uh, Akusmonium in Belgium from uh, 80. And the fir my first concert with space was in uh, 72. So I have um, <laughs> 500 concerts, I don't know. And then uh, I, with from this point, I construct a theory about the category of space. And what she says, speak is my category of uh, illusion of space, who is typically from François Bell, the first acousmium, and uh, uh, link it with the uh, microphone in stereo and link it with the blind listening and then uh, the space came to be an illusion but different if you want <laughs> okay uh, second curses if you want there are another uh, do od other categories uh, ambiophonic space the uh, it's contrary it's not an illusion but you don't know from where is the sun because the sounds for for example in this room you can make ambiphonic space because they are s the same loudspeakers there and you you make the s more or less the sound, same sounds but not in exactly and then you uh, plonge you jump uh, public in a bath of sounds very comfor comfortable mm. and uh, another kind of space is uh, ambiophonic but with divided uh, source uh, the technique is ambisonic sounds and uh, uh, you you have uh, like a, a, a real paysage landscape with any kind of different sounds, but you don't know where. Another kind of category of space is uh, geomet geometrical space, yes. like uh, like a, a co um, composer. You decide before the disposition, and you uh, construct the 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 way of the different cube, tri triangle, etc. Another kind also is um, multiphonic is re, um, uh, uh, source space then you can say from where is the sound and then you make uh, more polyphonic and uh, trajectory for example it's why in our studio in music and research we have uh, uh, the only one in Belgium, 16, uh, 16 channels uh, studio with uh, something like this and like this. 
And for example, the, the example from the Maceda, I, I know because I, 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 I uh, work on the repertory of uh, JRM, uh, is uh, an uh, ambiophonic space because any this uh, with the cassette, any place in any kind, so the result is, is ambiophonic. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, thank I you. would like to open up uh, the discussion because I can imagine if I already have like a list of questions, you definitely have as well. So if somebody has a question, please feel free to ask. Okay, for me, acoustic music is yeah. insight. Uh, maybe I just repeat a question because not everybody heard. Ah, uh, sorry. So the question if is the in the perception of acoustic uh, music, if there's a big difference with, with uh, for example, Beethoven, or because if we listen to them, we sometimes, or, or as you say, often feel that the same dynamics coming by. So if there's, a, what is there about a uh, difference? Is it something because we feel a need to speak in parameters and to deal with a raising of complexity? Okay, acoustic for me is the continuation of the, the story, classical story of uh, uh, what you say as classical music, so like uh, non-popular music, okay? Then, uh <coughs> It's the continuation, but with difference. The continuation is that at the end of the, at exactly in uh, 90, uh, no, <laughs> sorry, in 32 last century, a piece, uh, sonate pour piano, pour pia percussion et piano, from Bartok. Uh, introduce the introduce the noise <coughs> percussion as a solo uh, solo uh, musical value and after this uh, not so much more 48 Schaeffer say okay why we need now to uh, re to écrire, to write some symbolic uh, signs. No, because we have the recorders and we can uh, record all the things s about the sounds. Okay. So this is the first level, the sound. But after this, uh, we 
more and more go to a new research about effectively complexity, about uh, writing. It's why I make this book that you can see and I sell at, at the end. Uh, uh, writing on fixed media, but writing. So writing is like harmony and counterpoint after you compose, but you have the tools in your mental uh, own complexity. <laughs> Then uh, for me, it's there are no difference about um, the, the, the goal, but about the uh, musical uh, content. Yes, there are a lot. And also, you know that uh, With the electroacoustic music, we go inside the um, timbrel, uh, color timbrel, as the most uh, important uh, field of research. And in contemporary music, French, it's not a hazard. Uh, you have the spectral music with the same, wi but with the orchestra. Yeah. I have a question for, for Lila, but I, I might also apply to the other two wonderful uh, talks and speakers. Uh, it has to do with the distinction between uh, proprioception and exteroception. It seems to me that uh, Heller, Hel Helen Keller Uh, lost uh, the capacity to, uh, she, she retained the capacity of proprioception, but she couldn't see or hear. Mm -hmm. Recently I learned of the opposite uh, example uh, was highlighted by the psychologist uh, uh, by the name of Michael Turvey, who talks about uh, a gentleman who lost the uh, proprioceptive capacity below his neck. And uh, he's written a book about it called Daily Marathon. Uh, like He says a pebble beach is, is a help for him because he doesn't have the cap so what he has to do he has become a, a true Cartesian subject who uh, really uh, well his body is completely you know divorced from his mind Ho so in order to walk he has to actually he has to keep in check all his limbs and uh, he has to be able to observe where he's placing his uh, his feet uh, so I was wondering uh, uh, would you say that I mean which is worse it, it seems to me that When, when you lose your proprioceptive uh, sense, you re th this is really an, 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 a pro true nightmare, as opposed to he Helen Keller. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the answer is yeah, yes. Yeah, because then you, you would be kind of a, a mind without a body. Yes, yes. So the singularity is a bad thing, I guess. <laughs> it's Do you want me to uh, like elaborate on this? Y yes, a little bit, <laughs> because it seems to me, I mean, this is, this is where the body, the, the bo the, like the, the, the uh, proprio, uh, you talked about kinesthesia also. Yes. I was, I was reminded also of uh, um, Sheet Johnston, the primacy of movement, all these people, you know, who believe that the movement comes first and therefore, I mean, this is space making kind of. The, the way our Kava and Gaines talk about kinesthesia was slightly different because they um, talked about kinesthesia as your environment sensing you instead of you kind of sensing your environment. So it was a little bit the, the opposite of proprioception, mm -hmm. but in the same way, it was how you would imagine, maybe kinesthesia is what this gentleman has, mm -hmm. because it was how you would imagine yourself within the environment. So as if your environment would look at you from almost like a bird's eye, eye view. Uh, so yeah, I feel if you only have the second, it's much more difficult to uh, like understand where you are, navigate your environment. Yeah. So yeah, the relationship with space, it kind of becomes completely reversed. More questions? Yeah, in the back. Music or, or as a communal thing, or how does he see this 
Well, I think you know, there are different kind of aspects on kind of village music or indigenous music. You know, Masada was a kind of scholar, so. But you know, he was deep into music. He was a music scholar. So he kind of implies, uh, you know, he, what he could find village through the aspect of music, in a sense, in you know, how music function in the society. So. No, he. It's uh, in a sense a limited aspect, you know, the tribe, you know, tribal music. But you know, I don't know what does mean tribal music. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes or no? Because you know, in Maceta's case, you know. That was based on how music was presented in indigenous culture. So you could add a political connotation. However, you know, probably through Maceda himself, wasn't thinking about the political side much. But can I ask a, a question that relates to that? At a certain point, you were talking about um, Maceda and how he approaches more in a ritual yeah. way. Is it yeah. th then that what you mean now that it's rather something to share time and share the experience of, of participating in performance rather than a political approach? Yes, it's, yeah. it's a kind of good way of ex explaining. Uh, you know, <coughs> nature or ceremony, <coughs> you know, was in how in essence, people share the music with other people people in the community. So that's also a kind of politics as well, you know, in a sense. So but you know the for example, the you know political relations with the Marcos regime, that's completely different context actually. So which Maceda wasn't into actually. So you know, you necessarily your explanation is pretty good to answer the question. <laughs> Another question? One of the three. There's time for one last question. So if you have a question, now is the moment to uh, express it. If not, we can close the session here. And then I want to thank you once more uh, for the talks and the inspiring answers. Thank you.